Now then, there has been a lot of new information coming out on Borderlands 3 over the past sort of week or so because it's been E3, Gearbox putting out the new DLC for Borderlands 2, there's been a lot. But today we're going to focus on some of the more niche stuff that's come out, specifically deep diving into new information on endgame, progression, and just interesting things that I spotted that A, I haven't seen anybody else talk about, and B, figured I'd share it with you guys as you might also find it interesting. We have stuff like new Mo's gameplay, her talent tree, her abilities, and gameplay from Eden 6, much like we're seeing in the background here. But ultimately, I've seen a lot of people talk about it, let's talk about something else. The first section of this video, and a good portion of it, is surrounding the Guardian rank system. We highlighted this from the gameplay at the first gameplay reveal stream, which was at the start of last month. And this is a screenshot showing you exactly how it looks. And you can see it's broken down into two separate things. Bonus stats on the left hand side and Guardian rewards on the right. They're effectively a system that is going to replace badass ranks from Borderlands 2. But how we get Guardian tokens and how we redeem them is still unknown. But we do know this. From the Gearbox developers, they said that the Guardian system is meant to double down on what made the badass ranks so good. It's all about infinite progression, but also has skills and skins that you can open up as you go. And every character that you have benefits from Guardian ranks. So if you have a sort of max level, which we'll talk about in a second, Amara, you will still get these benefits on your Moes, your Flak, no doubt when you get to max level on them. But as I said, you will get skills and skins from being able to do this. The skins is a great way for you to be able to see, like a title in World of Warcraft, oh, this player has this mount as an example. I know that he's done this content, meaning that he's a veteran at this game, he knows his stuff. So it's meant to really show how good a player is when they have these almost exclusive skins that they can only get from putting in a lot of time and effort into the Guardian system. You unlock the Guardian rank system by completing the end of the story, not from getting max level, which I think is really important to highlight. And the progression applies into three main categories, offense, defense, and utility. You put points into the mini trees on the right hand side, and as you put points in, you open up different skills from those skill trees. I'm assuming when they say different skills, they mean like different talents, like you would get in a talent tree. So not only could you probably augment existing talents that you have in the talent tree, much like you can with class mods in Borderlands 2, new skills might pop up that makes your Explosion Amara melee build even better, meaning that you should dedicate more time to doing that. Gives you a bit more of a carrot on a stick. So you have reason to get cosmetics because it makes you look really good and everybody's like, wow, you put so much time into this character, you're really good at Borderlands. And also getting skills that makes you a lot stronger, being able to do more aspirational content. I effectively think that these are going to work like Paragon levels from Diablo 3, at least to an extent. Maybe it is just that you keep grinding out content, you reach max level at 50, but you still keep leveling up. You do that in Destiny 2 when you get engrams that give you cosmetics. You don't level up, you don't get stronger, but you still get stuff for leveling up, if that makes sense. And I think that that's where I can see this system working for Guardian ranks. Being able to get certain achievements I didn't necessarily like too much in Borderlands 2, but let me know what you think. How would you like to see people unlock Guardian tokens? Now this is interesting, speaking of skins, we did get a brief look at customization from a video coming from Skulls228. Now I don't know if I'm allowed to show this gameplay or not, it was from a behind closed door screening, but I haven't seen anybody say that they couldn't upload this. On screen you're seeing some of the head skins and emotes in game, and I'll sort of let that play so you can have a brief look. Another really cool thing to highlight is that you can change the colours on the skins, meaning that, unlike Borderlands 2, your skins will basically just be recolours of existing ones. And it just looks like there's more unique stuff. Not to mention that you also have customization of the weapons. You can add stuff like trinkets, which are shown on screen, which are little things that you add onto your weapons, like keychains. And it wouldn't surprise me to see stuff based around streamers, like a Gefalian one or a Baru one. Maybe a Ryan Central one one day, but I'm not really holding out for it. But also you have weapon skins, which again, will most likely be unlocked, at least a few of them, through the Guardian rank system. It basically is all there to show how many hours you put into your character, which is a big deal for a lot of people. But customization doesn't just stop with how you look, but it also affects how you play. With stuff like grenades, shields, class mods and artifacts, 
which I don't know if they're relics or replacing relics, but in any case, all of these things have a bigger impact on what makes your character unique. Starting with grenades, creative director Paul Sage spoke about how some grenades after they explode turn into a set of guns in the air that start shooting targets. We also of course know of grenades that bounce around going ouch, ouch, ouch and then blow up. So we know that there's going to be very unique, kind of quirky grenades in the game as well as some that are just really good and really strong. Shields was an interesting one. It didn't seem like Gearbox could do much exciting stuff with an additional bit of, you know, regenerating health. But one shield example that Paul gave was that when you crouch, the shield that you have equipped that you wear will extend in front of you blocking damage. I'm not really sure how that would necessarily look, but I'm excited to see what other, you know, crazy shit some of the shields can do. Class mods and artifacts are the main source of class customization, as we know from previous games. If we're under the assumption that artifacts are in fact relics or replacing them, not only will they augment talents that you already have equipped, like in previous games, you know, an extra five points into a fully capped out talent, According to Paul yet again, they will also provide new skills that can be added onto your loadout. It's hard to know how strong some of these talents are going to be, but it's certainly exciting. I can see some situations where, simply put, a certain class mod is best in slot because it provides a new talent for a melee build yet again that you just really can't go without. But yeah, that's the most important thing about that. It could give additional skills as well as enhancing skills that you currently have. If artifacts are going to be replacing relics, then it does seem that there's going to be a big change there. Now it seems that artifacts are going to be focusing on movement abilities, doing stuff like sliding faster, sliding causing explosions, vaulting was also mentioned. It's hard to know or imagine the extent of how these artifacts will affect movement, but it seems that that's the main focus for now at least. Endgame is important with any game and Borderlands 3 is no different. There was a big focus on vault bosses being the big thing for this game, plural not singular, and also examples of multi-phase bosses coming up and it sounds like Borderlands will have these in abundance as well as a more traditional mini boss in an arena approach that we all know and love from previous games. But these bosses will be more mini bosses in comparison which we've already seen gameplay of and experienced ourselves. The level cap of Borderlands 3 is also going to be level 50 and will feature some other kind of PvP mentioned here by Paul Sage in the interview. Other kinds of PvP? Mm, yes and no. <laughs> and also maybe. Yeah, Perfect. Maybe, yeah. It's like, huh, that sounds pretty cool actually. Maybe it's some sort of PvPvE mode like Gambit in Destiny 2 but hopefully better, you know what I mean? But it's hard to say, it's certainly some food for thought. Maybe two groups of people in a horde mode, whoever can survive the longest, that'd be really cool. But the gameplay in the background of this video has of course been based around Moe's. We'll be talking about her some other time when I get hands on. I wasn't at E3, so I don't really want to talk about it too much. But also was featured was Eden 6, the new world that we haven't explored just yet. The gameplay also follows a crew challenge, helping out Moxie shut down some Children of the Vault broadcasts. Apparently there's a few of these on each world, with you doing similar things on different planets. Gearbox have also said that they've doubled and tripled down doing more side missions. So everything that we've gone over is pretty exciting and a lot of people really pointed out from E3 that this new Borderlands game could ship tomorrow because it looks so finalised and polished. Lots of people are excited for this game. I'm certainly no exception, but it's easy to understand why. But thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, just a nice little breakdown of some of the information that I feel nobody's really highlighted yet, so I kinda wanted to get in there first, keep all of you up to date. Thanks for all of the support, really appreciate you guys, take care, and I'll see you soon.